Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This channel is Math with a Purpose. Today I'm going to go over a math assessment for the trades. Um, this is the second video in the series. Problems numbers 1 through 21 are in a previous video. I'll put a link in the description. I'll also put a link to this test. What I'd highly recommend you do is you print that test out. You do quite a few problems and then watch how I do them and go back and forth between the two. Doing well on any standardized math test takes a lot of practice so you just got to do a lot of problems and you also got to watch other people do them so that you learn those tips and tricks. Uh, I've been teaching math and woodshop for years and uh, I have a lot of those tips and tricks and I just like sharing them with you so you could do the best possible on any standardized math exam. All standardized math exams are pretty similar so the more you practice the better you do. Let's go ahead and get started. Number 22, uh, find the perimeter and area of the figure. There are going to be two answers here, and this is a not multiple choice answer. So if this is 9 tenths, it's implying that it is a rectangle. This is 9 tenths, this is 1 tenth. But I could add that side and that side, 9 tenths plus 1 tenth. The way I add fractions, I add across the top, and I keep the bottom as long as it's the same number. And I get 10 tenths, that reduces to 1. So this side and this side together are equal to 1. So 1 plus one would be two, so the perimeter is equal to two. The area is length times width. It's gonna be nine tenths times one tenth, which is gonna be equal to nine times one over 10 times 10, or nine one hundredths. Number 23, uh, add, write the answers of fractions simplified to the lowest terms. Again, to add fractions, you have to have the same denominator, which is not the same here. So I'm going to have to multiply this first fraction by 2 over 2. That's going to give me an 8. And that's going to give me 6 over 8 plus 1 over 8. I have that common denominator of 8. Now I add across the top to get 7. I keep that common denominator on the bottom, 8. And my answer is 7 eighths. Answer D right here. You want to mark up the exam as much as you can, crossing out answers that don't make sense. So if you have to make a choice, it's more of an informed choice between only a couple of answers. And you mark it up to really highlight the key points and not make any careless mistakes. And the other reason you mark it up is if there's time at the end and you're going to go back, uh, you don't have to start the problem all over again. All your work's already there. Number 24, um, I have mixed numbers here. So I have a 3 and a 2. I'm going to add those together to get 5. And then I have the 1 fifth plus the one quarter. Again, I need a common denominator. Um, it could be 5, 10, 15, 20. The only number both of these will go in is a 20. So I have to multiply this by a 5 over a 5. I got to multiply this by a 4 over a 4. I'm multiplying by a factor of 1, so it doesn't affect the value. That's going to give me 4 20th for that one, 5 20th for this one. Add across the top to get 9 over that common denominator of 20. So the fractional part is 9 20th. So I have 5 and 9 20th. I look through my answers here, and here it is, answer D. Number 25, subtract the two fractions. Subtracting fractions is the same as adding. You have to have a common denominator. This is 100. This is 1,000. So that common denominator is going to be 1,000. So i got to multiply this one by 10 over 10, that's going to give me 90 one thousandths minus 3 one thousandths. I have that common denominator of 1,000. 90 minus 3, 87 over that common denominator of 1,000. Number 26, Phil bought 15 fourths of an acre of land. So that's going to be 3 and 3 fourths of an acre and he sold three-fourths of an acre. So you could see what's left is going to be three acres. I did that one pretty quickly because I converted this into a mixed number. The way I did that is four goes into 15 three times. After it goes into there three times, that's 12. 15 minus 12 is three, so it's three and three-fourths left over. I could have done 15-fourths minus a three-fourths to get 12-fourths and reduce that fraction to three acres. Number 27, I have mixed numbers and I'm subtracting. First thing I need to do is get a common denominator. 
So I got 7 20th and 1 10th. I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2. Give me that common denominator of 20. So that's going to be 19 and 2 20th minus 16 and 7 20th. 2 minus 7 is going to give me a negative number. So I don't really want a negative number when I subtract my fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow a full unit from here, make this an 18. A full unit in 20th will be 20 20th. So I'm going to add that 20 20th to this. 20 plus 2 is 22. Then I have 22 minus 7, 15 20th. 18 minus 16 is 2. So I have 2 and 15 20th. I don't see that there, but it's not a reduced fraction. 5 goes into 15 three times. 5 goes into 20 four times. So I have 2 and 3 quarters. Answer C right there. All right, moving right along to decimals. Answer in the space provided. Do not use a calculator. So take this decimal right here, 1.7, and convert it into a fraction. No matter what, this doesn't make sense. You don't have a decimal inside of a fraction. So you know that's not going to be it. And I know this is greater than 1, so that can't be it either, because that's less than 1. So now I only have two things to choose from. Um, so if I had a guess, I'd be a much better guess between B and D. But I could just figure that out. That 0.7 is saying 7 tenths. So that 1 is this one in the front. That 0.7 is 7 tenths, or this portion right here. So answer B. OK, number 29. Write the decimal as a proper fraction or a mixed number. They're all 30s, except for this one. This number right here, divided by 100, I moved the decimal over two places to get 304. That doesn't make sense. This one right here, 425 divided by 100, is you know 4. It's, it's a whole unit. So that would be like 34. So that doesn't make sense. 17 four hundredths. It could be that one or 17 Fortieths. Well, this is 425 one thousandths, right? That's what that 0.425 is. So I have 30 and 425 one thousandths. I could kind of reduce that fraction and figure it out. But I could also see that this is a little bit less than half. This is a little bit less than half. That kind of makes sense. And this is really a very small amount of the 400. So I don't really have to reduce that fraction. Just through a process of elimination, I see the answer C is it. OK, number 30, round to the nearest thousandths. So this is actually my tenths place. The next one is my hundredths place. And then that first five is my thousandths place. This is going to bring it up. So it's going to be, i got to bump that one up. So that 55 is going to go to a 6. So it's 0.046 to the nearest thousandths. And there it is right there, answer A. 31, subtract 0.554 from 4. So I'm going to do 4.000 minus 0.554. So I can't do 0 minus 4, so I have to start borrowing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow a full unit from here and make this a 3. 0.9910. That 10 in the thousands will give me a hundredths. The full unit in the hundredths will give me in the tens place. And 10 right there is going to give me the 4. So then I do 10 minus 4 to get 6. 9 minus 5 to get 4. 9 minus 5 to get 4. And then 3 minus 0. So my answer is 3.446. And I can see when I add that 0.446, to the 0.554, it's going to give me a full 4. So the answer to 31 is this right here. 32, add those three decimal numbers together. I'm going to rewrite them, lining my decimal point up. So I have 59.9 plus 30.432 and 7.84. I'm going to add them up. I just keep my decimal point right there. 2, the 3 and the 4 is a 7, 9 and 4 is 13, 13 and 8 is 21. There's a 1 part, I carry that 2 up there, 2 and 9, 11, plus 7, 18. I carry the 1, 1, 6, 9, and I get 98. See if that even makes sense. 
60 and 30, 90 plus 7, pretty close to 98. So 98.172 is my answer. Okay, getting started on number 33 here. I'm just going to rewrite that. 8.27 times 0 0.7. That's the same thing as 0 0.70. Before I even start, I'm just going to see if I could just do this without having to multiply it out. So I have 8, approximately 8, times about 3 quarters, about 5 or 6. So it clearly can't be that one or that one. So I have to pick between B and D. Um, I can't really do anything quickly to see which one it is. So I am going to multiply it out. 0 times 0 times that is all 0. I have a placeholder here. 7 times 7 is 9. I mean 49. 49 carry the 4. 14 and 4 is 18. Carry the 1. 56 and 1 is 57. My decimal is over 1, 2, 3, 4. So when I add this up, I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and I get 5.789. 5.789, answer D right there. Number 34, divide the quotient in decimal form. So 64.48 divided by 1.04. I'm going to move this over 1, 2 to get 104. If I do that there, I do it here as well to get 6,448. So 104 is going to go in a 644 six times, and that's going to give me 624. And then 4 minus 4 is 0, 4 minus 2 is 2, bring down the 8. And then 104 is going to go into 208, 2 times 62. So there's my answer right there, answer B, 62. Okay, number 35, a contractor bought 31 bags of blocks at $1.57, five bags of mortar at $5.25, and three bags at $5.75. So before I even do all of this and add, multiply these and then add them all together, I'm just going to look at my answers um, and see if there are any ones that are kind of I can tell B and D are almost the same, so I know it's going to be pretty close to 90, so I know it can't be those two. If I'm out of time, I would just guess between B or D, or I could just multiply through it and see if I could solve this. So 157 times 31, I'm going to do the 1 times the 7, 1 times the 5, 1 times the 1. Got a placeholder here, 3 times 7, 21. Carry the 2, 17. Carry the 1, 3, and 4. I add that together, get 7, 6, 8, 4. I'm over two decimal places, so it's 48.67. Over here, um, I might see this as 25 plus $1.25, um, 26.25, or I could just multiply through. 5 times 5, 25, carry the 2. 10 and a 2, it's 12, carry the 1, 25, 26. Again, two decimal places over. So you're going to have 26, 25. And then over here, I'll multiply 3 times 5, 15. 21 plus a 1, 22. Carry the 2. 15 and 2, 17. Again, two decimal places, 17, 25. So I'll put that down here. Now I'm going to add these three numbers up. 7 plus 5 plus 5. There's a 10 plus 7, 17. Carry the 1, 2, 4, 10, 11. Carry the 1. 8 and 1 is 9. Plus 6 is 15. Plus 7 is 2, 22. Carry the 2, 2, 6, 8, 9. And I have 92, 17. Answer D. Okay, number 36, a member shall... At a health club costs five hundred and sixty dollars per year. Kind of translating the paragraph to a couple numbers. The club has a payment plan in which a member can pay fifty dollars down, plus twelve times a certain amount per payment. How much is each payment? So if there are no cost to it, I could do fifty plus twelve x equals five sixty, or I could just do five sixty minus the fifty, five hundred and ten. Right after I put $50 down, I got 510 more to pay. I got to make 12 payments of that. So 12 goes into 51, 
four times to give me 48. 30, right? 51 minus 48 is 3. Bring down the 0. 12 goes into 30 two times. Give me 24 with 6 left over. And that's a remainder of 6 twelfths. 6 twelfths is a half. So I make a down payment of $50 and spend $42.50 per month. That would be answer A. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. Please comment below if you've been taking standardized math tests and this test is helping you. Um, I'd love to hear your comments and I'd love to hear where you're using this math. And uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up in a couple more problems here just because I don't want the video to be too long. Number 37, write the fraction as a decimal. Well, decimal is going to have a divider of 100, so I'm going to multiply that by 2 over 2. That'll give me 26 over 100. And then I could convert that to a decimal pretty easily by making it over 1. I go over 1, 2. So I go over 1, 2. And my answer would be 0.26. 38, write the fraction as a repeating decimal. So the best way to do that is multiply it out. I think of this fraction as falling over. So I want to do 33 and a 14. Well, it doesn't go in a 14, so I've got to put a decimal there. 33 into 140, it's going to go in there four times. 4 times 3 is 12, or 120 plus 12, 132. 8, 140 minus 32 is 8. Bring down the 0, 33 and the 80 goes in there twice um, to give me 66. 80 minus 66 is 14, so I can see I'm starting to repeat again. It doesn't go into 14, so I bring down the 0. I have a 140. It's going to go into there four times. I can see there's a pattern forming, so it's going to be 4, 2, 4, 2, or the 4, 2 repeats itself. So that bar means 0 0.42, 0 0.42 afterwards. So here's the correct answer for 38, answer C. And stay tuned for the next video. If you didn't watch the first video, maybe go back and watch that one as well. Again, I'll put a link to the test in the description. Um, best way to do it is probably print it out and do the test and then watch parts of the video. All right, I sure hope this helped. Remember, just kind of practicing and watching videos like this to see how other people do um, will really help with the tips and tricks and figuring out these non-calculator standardized math exams.